G'day sports fans, it's Fanta 100 here. Welcome back to Paladins Champions of the Realm, fueled by Juiced Energy. If you don't have any more lag or latency in that old brain of yours, get some juice that is a sugar-free, crash-free Australian product. Use my code, Phantom, P-H-A-N-T-O-M, all in capitals, for 10% off all your orders, including shakers, tubs, merchandise, you name it. Uh, it's a great product, and the website, as always, is linked in the description. Great sponsor, great product. Now, as you can tell by the title of this video, as for always, because I try to title these as clearly as possible, uh, I'm going to be playing a uh, flank character that I've always wanted to try since she came out. I think she was one of the most recent characters when I first started doing these videos, actually. But, like, playing a new character in Paladins is really difficult, because everyone insta locks this character. Vora. So we're playing some Vora. Vora the Harbinger. She seems really cool, and ever since she came out, I was like, oh boy, she's really cool. Like, I love her design, her aesthetic. She just seems really neat, and uh, and also her abilities are really cool as well. She's got a giant scythe. What's not to love? So, her main attack is the deadly scythe. Fire projectiles to deal damage over time and gain a stack of darkness. Consuming darkness heals Vora over time. Consuming maximum stacks augments other abilities. So she has a little darkness mechanic, stacks it to five times, and then using... Her obliteration, or her dark siphon skill, consume that, which adds a little bit more to the abilities. We'll actually, we'll actually go over that in advance. This is probably better. This is a better way to do this, I think. So, yeah. So, the deadly side, blah, 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 does the damage, right? And the passive hits your side, provide darkness stack to you. Easy dark siphon or obliteration will consume all stacks, healing you for 100 over 1 seconds per stack, and all bent to the ability if at 5 stacks, you can have a maximum of 5. Uh, then we've got uh, her obliteration. It's her, it's her right click ability. Jump up and slash down, becoming immune on impact, deal 500 damage, and apply a knockback. Consuming maximum darkness deals increased damage and slows. So this is a pretty decent range attack. It's great for that uh, knockback. So CC is good uh, from any character in this game. So I really like obliteration. You go to third person and attack him. It's really cool. But F is the tendril. Manifest your will, propelling yourself towards your target with a tendril. You can hit players to pull you to them. So basically, you got a pretty long range tendril. You throw it out. If you hit something, you drag yourself to it. Whether it be a wall or an enemy player, pretty much, very much like uh, the uh, the tendril like move that uh, Grover has. He can propel himself towards something as well. So it's very similar to that. Dark Siphon is a Q ability. This is my personal favorite. It deals 200 damage on hit and an additional 400 damage over time. Hitting enemy heals for 300 over two seconds. Consuming maximum darkness stacks cripples on hit for 1.5 seconds. So she throws out. A powerful little beam from the scythe, so it's like a poof, big, um, higher power hit. And uh, yeah, the cripple's great if you got all the stacks, but even the healing, she's got some decent built-in sustain. So you combine that with uh, the life fruit item and the build I made for it, she, she should be pretty able to survive. Considering she's only got two thousand health, she's one of the lowest health characters in the game. And you gotta be wary of that. Her E is the Harbinger's Wrath. Hunt your enemies, increasing your movement speed and reducing the damage you take. Select a nearby target to lock down, damaging or executing them if they are low health. So, it'll mark them, you just target them, it'll show you how much health they've got, uh, if they're killable, and you'll either do a heck ton of damage, or you'll just try to execute them, and it's really, really cool. You go into third person mode while you're doing this, so you're just like, sort of, just floating around in third person, that movement speed and damage reduction, and yeah, then you can just absolutely silence someone. Her talents. Unyielding pressure. Your dark siphon now deals an additional 10% of the target's maximum health as damage over 1.5 seconds. Really, really strong. And that's the only talent we're going to be able to use for now because uh, we haven't unlocked these yet. But yeah, we've got Tendril gains a second charge with Relentless Presence. A deafening silence. Obliteration now silences enemies hit for 1.65 seconds. Silence is really strong. It means that they can't use any of their skills or abilities. Silence is really, really powerful. And I think it's one of the best CC abilities in this game. So honestly, out of all these, I like this one. But this one, Onion Impression is probably the one I'd go for the most, so it's ironic that that's the uh, available one. Now to show you guys the Moors Embrace, the loadout that we have for Vora today. Broken Promises, heal for 180 for each enemy hit with obliteration, so when we obliterate, if we hit multiple enemies, because it's like an area effect attack, then uh, we can get a bit of healing out of it. Deadly Dance, generate 2% ultimate charge for each enemy hit by obliteration, so again, each enemy that hits them. So the idea is to throw obliteration into a crowd of enemies, so we're going to get some more ult charge out of that. False Idol, increase your movement speed by 10% and gain 10% life steal for 2 seconds after falling to or below 40% health, which, believe me, with her low health pool, is going to happen quite often. Sharpened Resolve, consuming darkness stacks heals you for an additional 40 per stack. So you just want a bit more life gain out of the consuming their 5 stacks of darkness, so that is just to help us get there. 
The Moors Embrace. Increase your movement speed by 18% for one second after hitting anything with Deadly Scythe. So, we're getting passive movement speed just when we hit with a basic attack. So, let's trigger the Scythe. We're getting hits with a basic attack, which, like I said, it does throw out a little beam. So, it is ranged. And we get movement speed. Great for chasing down people, getting closer than they try to run away so that we can, I don't know, hit it with a blood raid, get ult charge, that sort of thing. Bit of synergy there. So, I'm hoping that build works out pretty well. And I'm hoping that I can actually get this character today. But she's been out for a while. You see it in a lot of games, but not every game, so I feel like my chances are pretty good at getting her and uh, showing her off today. So, without further ado, let's play our two games, test out this build, and show you guys some Vora. <laughs> and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, we've got a Siege game. Whew, starting off with Siege, learning a new character on Siege. No pressure or anything like that. Let's get Vora in here. She's got some really cool skins, but I don't have any of them, so I would very much like to get them. we got this one, we got this one, and we got this one. So yeah, she's got some really cool skins. So, with 37 seconds left to go, our friendly team is mostly locking in, because we've got the Vora, we've got the Ray, we've got the Victor, Io, and the Vi, the new guy, which I did test the other day. Seems pretty cool, looking forward to covering him when I get a chance to. 25 seconds, every team has not finished locking in. We're on the we're on the timber mill today, so that's going to be interesting. I don't think I've gotten this map for a little while. Um, I'm hoping I can find plenty of opportunities to assassinate people without... Uh, Putting myself in harm's way. We don't have a front line on our side, so that's going to be a problem. Not having a tank in siege, but it is what it is. We make do with what we can. But I just realised that, and that's kind of awkward. But uh, it is what it is. Our enemy team is not fully locked in yet. There we go. Adroxus, Vi, Pip, Yagroth, and Victor. All right. Okay. Nearly done a video on every character here, except uh, except for Vi, basically. So this will be this will be interesting. Hopefully, we don't see anything too crazy. Uh, Good thing the Vi is on, uh, on our side as well, so we can find out what that's like to fight against. But uh, yeah, we'll be right back when this game is loaded. Alrighty, guys, we're just picking this first talent because that's the only one we've got avail available to us. More's a brace. Right, so for Vora, I think we're just going to go Kronos, and we're going to go Nimble because she's supposed to be fast. Right, now as you guys have noticed, the skill bar is different. So, Toxic Bad Boy uh, commented on one of my videos and said uh, if you change the skill bar to centered, it uh, changes the layout and looks way better. And my opinion is, yeah, it does look better. You can now see my build in the bottom right-hand corner. You can see the items I've picked down there. And then your skills are in the middle. And I actually kind of like that. So this is the scythe. This is the range it does. You see those little dots? Those dots are with our darkness. They will fill up as we gain stacks. This is the... the I forget the name. That's the ranged one. That's the obliterate. That's the area effect one you want to hit multiple people with. And that's the tendril. Spin to win. Go the portal. All right. Yeah, it's been a little while since I had this map. I remember the first time I had this map in ages was playing Octavia when she was new. Really liked that character. I actually played her last night in the game, so it was really fun. I'd forgotten how fun she was. Alright, so we're going to try and be clever here if we can be. The Droxus would be a good target, I suppose, if we don't miss. Ah, oh, there we go. There's your Droxus. So straight away is the Vora we've shown the Droxus how it's done. So we have one stack of darkness, so we gain a stack each time we hit with uh, our scythe, but we did consume the stacks when we hit him with our right click. So I'm just going to sit here and wait, because my job isn't really objective time, it is assassinating these guys, catching them off guard, causing a bit of CC, disrupting their play. Looks like they're letting us cap though, which is interesting. Oh, there's the Yag, the Yag is throwing out stuff, don't appreciate that. Who's contesting here? Okay, well, they're not really being that aggressive at the moment, so I'm kind of suspicious. I'm going to tendril up here. Didn't, well, okay, we didn't get as high as we wanted to, but... The objective has been captured, so let's, uh... Let's tendril up here if we can, if it goes all cool down. Oh, excuse me. I don't want to be shot, thanks. The Yag would be a hard target to hit. We're just going to sit here and snipe her at range. Consumed our uh, darkness and missed, so that was a bit of a waste. I'm very confused. What is the enemy team doing? They're not being anywhere near as aggressive as they should be. They're not really defending much. Uh, this is risky, but we're going for it anyway. Had the kill stolen from us, but that's fine. Having IRP to help is good. Where's his Adroxus? I can hear him. Actually, the Victor's up here too. This is Victor. I think he's just dead. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. There's the Yag. There's the Yag. She's going to be a problem for us. Great if we can kill her, though. 
Hello. If you'd mind just dying for us, there we go. <laughs> Feels bad, man. Feels real bad. Okay, so so far the enemy team isn't putting up much of a fight, which is making my Vora look really skilled at the game. And I guarantee you, this is literally the first time I've played her. I went to the training area and tried her abilities, and that was it. That was the first successful push. And I uh, tried to get in a cheeky kill there. Okay, so either Vora is really strong, or the enemy team is having a bad day, and it is very likely having a bad day. Uh, so to add to our lifesteal, we're going to go life rip here, because I think that life rip, along with a passive lifesteal, is kind of broken. And because she's low health, can't not have Haven. Got to reduce the damage you take, honestly. At 2,000 health, you got to be weary of that. So, yeah, it's just... <laughs> Vi is balanced. No, I think Vora is balanced, buddy. Vora is balanced. She's so strong. I think I think everything that I just did in that game was 100% fair. Five, four, Three, two, one. one. Spin to win. Let's go. Let's cap and push it. Let's just end this game. Let's have this be like the shortest siege game ever. I feel like it would be done. Scythe Lady is going to like make me look professional. Maybe I should play more often, eh? She's making me think of Tiberius. Tiberius is a character that makes me look good at the game. Because Tiberius is so strong. So maybe, maybe Vora is that kind of character. You know, she she's like, she's like gender bit uh, Tiberius for me. Thank you for the heals, Ray. I really appreciate that. Having Ray and I on the team does help make up for the, the lack of tank a little bit. Because it means we have a lot of healing. Now... I should be pushing this far, considering we're still only just capping, but I am an assassin. What are you doing, Yag? I don't think so. I'm going to consume all my stacks here and hit her. She's doing a lot of damage to us, but we have some pretty good heals behind us to keep us alive, so the supports are making me look like a pro. As for what the Vi is doing, I don't know. I don't think he knows. What is our range on our F? Pretty far, actually. Pretty respectable. Huh! Oh, we finally died. We overextended just a little bit, but distracting the enemy team is definitely something that uh, I can be proud of. We respawned pretty quick, so... Definitely the best thing you can do as an assassin like Vora is to push, be aggressive, distract the enemy team. If they spend time attacking you, well, they're not going to be able to get to the payload, are they? They're going to be too distracted trying to take out crazy, scary Scythe Lady. I can hear the Androxus. I can hear him charging around. Uh, if I can get up here... Oh, that actually worked. Excellent. Excellent. You'll love it. I'm gonna come down here and snipe this boy. I didn't die, but I helped. So that's one way you can jump down on somebody and just absolutely destroy them. Yag is being annoying, but uh, there are some people here that are a bit vulnerable, so that's, this is gonna be our target for today. Okay. Got that little kill. Feels bad, man. I was being really aggressive. She's being like the ultimate aggressive support right now. Holy god! Okay, everyone's just getting wiped out. Feel kind of bad for them. Like I'm trying, I'm trying to help, but it's like I'm not needed. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! Can we snipe him at this range? We, we could, we could, we could. Oh, we got another kill. Kill the Vi. That feels cheeky. That feels cheeky. I like it. I'm just going to push the payload here real quick. And boom, victory. Just like that. That is probably the easiest win I've ever had. I feel bad for the enemy team because obviously they weren't coordinated. Or they, I don't know what they were doing, but it feels like they threw that. But uh, that's your first little look at uh, Vora and uh, yeah, how aggressive she can be, how strong she is. Her abilities. I love her abilities. She's really cool. Um, I was really expecting that. Huh. Well, check the scoreboard here real quick. So we only got four kills. We had a lot of our kills taken from us. We only died once, which is good. We were trying to stay alive. But yeah, our damage is really low, but it's not normally. You know, it's not supposed to be. Our damage is supposed to be higher. But uh, first game is Vora. Enemy team is kind of being weird. So we are going to... We can't commend anybody for some reason. Why is not giving me any commendation options? Do I just not have commendation points? Weird. All right. Well, oh, we've, well, oh, we've gained the second, uh, the second talent to gain more tendrils, but I think I'll keep using the one I've already got. Alright guys, we are going to requeue, find one more game, and uh, hopefully it's a bit more even? Less one-sided, so we can show off more even more. <laughs>
We'll be right back. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to try this one more time. Another Siege game. <sighs> Siege is definitely, again, the best way to show Vora. Though, honestly, considering her skills, I can see her being really good in uh, TDM. Just running around and killing people. TDM would be great for her, I think. Yeah, because she's good at being aggressive, staying in the fight. Elvin Sloth. Oh, it looks like people know each other. <laughs> oh my god, that's cool. You don't see people use the chat very often, but it's great when um when people seem like they're having, gonna have fun. You know, what? I'll, I'll I'll type in good luck, have fun. I don't usually type as often as I'd like to, but I'm going to this occasion because uh, people are having fun in chat and recognizing each other. Apparently, no front line. So if we get it, there we go. We got a tank. So it's Vora, Cassie, Makoa, Furia, and possibly Sky. I'm liking this team set up. Don't see Makoa in games as often as I'd like. Two. One. Oh, there we go. Yep, it's Sky. And the enemy team is... Oh, look! It's Tiberius, Bomb King, Victor, Khan, and Maldumba. Just thinking about Tiberius before, so... Oh, it looks like one of the players is learning Cassie. That's cool. I hope they have uh, a lot of players. So basically, the Sky and the Cassie recognize each other. Cassie is a fun character. I did a video on it all that long ago. But, yeah, I'm really liking these teams. This is going to be quite interesting. Uh, I guess aim for the Maldumba. He's going to be our main target, being a support. Alrighty, so we're going to go and using pressure again. So I feel like that's just like probably the best one overall. <sighs> Hopefully we get to show this a bit more. So again, yeah, I'm going to go actually. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go life rip right away. Life rip away and nimble. So we have two items right away. And then, yeah, they're all aim for probably Chrono, uh, Haven, then Chronos. Her skills aren't too low, but we definitely need the damage reduction more because of our low health. So I think that's a good order to have things in. You could go Haven first, but getting the Nimble right away is good, and the Life Rip just adds to what she already does. So I would recommend, uh, yeah, Nimble and Life Rip being your first uh, items. But let me know if you play Vora, what your build would be for her. I definitely would like to know how differently you play her. Three, two, one. Alrighty, guys. Good luck learning Cassie, even though I noticed that you're very high level with Cassie, so I don't know about that. But anyway... Good luck with that. Right, so I'm actually not going to go to the point. It's an old habit of mine, but I don't actually need to be there. Oh, okay. All right then, Victor. Let's see if we can get a kill on him before he runs away. We've got a decent, we've got a decent chunk of health back there, but Bomb King was able to kill us because, well, it's Bomb King. He does really high DPS, so sadly, uh, we got caught out there. But that Victor was forced to run. Like that Victor did not want to deal with us because we did a heck of ton of damage to him got a huge chunk of health back and Victor was like mm, no I think I won't deal with that actually we are going to go on the point McCullough needs help here never mind he captured it on his own he knows what he's doing all right I'm going to try and find a battle to get into the bomb king is definitely my biggest threat because of how low health I am and the, the Khan is definitely somebody I don't want to fight either you don't want to fight the Khan or the bomb king because they either do high damage or have high health so yeah. Tiberius, I feel like I can take on. And Maldumbo should be too much of a problem. Victor, I'm also not really that worried about Victor either. I'm confident I can kill him. I can get a bunch of healing off him, we'll be fine. He has to run away. I just don't want to fight the Bomb King. Or the tank, if I can help it. But it looks like I might not have a choice. So it definitely has... Being low health definitely gives us plenty of foils. Yeah. Okay. We can't go to the point. We've got to try and be more... we got to try and be more stealthy. Like we're first game. Be aggressive. Flank them. We have to literally flank them. Otherwise, just going to keep dying. It's going to be the reverse to last last game. And uh, actually not be a good showing of this character. Be fair that we are pushing the payload. So things are going pretty well. I'm just not feeling good about it. Can I beat this Tiberius? I don't know. It's a 1v2. So, yeah, not ideal. Actually, it was 1v3, because my Dumbo was up there, too. Alright, so they're doing the smart thing. Because they know that I exist, they're not... None of them are isolating each other. They're all staying together in at least pairs or groups. Which is smart. It's a lot harder for me to kill them if they... Oh, fudge. Failed that. It's a lot harder to kill them if they're grouped up and working together. Like, my, my whole thing is isolated targets. Okay, so Tiberius was able to kill us really fast. Do not know exactly how he's able to do that, but, uh, yeah, it's starting to work against me. I mean, even Tiberius got more health. I think he's got at least 22 or 2300, so, yeah, we are at a huge health disadvantage. 
Doesn't mean you know, I'm not going to recommend this character to you. I just feel like she's definitely... Don't really want to do this, but... Oh god, he just grabbed me. That's awkward. That should get us killed pretty quickly. Yeah. I'm trying to at least be a distraction if I can. We're going to go Haven. We need the Haven. Uh, and then we'll go Kronos. Finish the builds. So we can start upgrading it. Four. Three. Two. One. Can the friendly team keep it contested? It's in overtime now. So this is kind of awkward. I don't know what I was throwing the scythe at. Okay, we have to keep this contested or we're just going to lose it. Oh, thanks for cover the bubble. No, the bubble did not protect us from being sniped by the Tiberius. That is kind of awkward. Can't say I'm a fan of that. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 current, the current team setup is definitely not advantageous for me to get into. Especially that Bomb King. He is my biggest problem. Because that Bomb King can almost one-shot us with some of his abilities. Because he does a lot of damage. Now, truth be told, they're bombs. They should be easy to avoid, right? But they're not, though. That's the thing. It makes him unpredictable. A successful push, though. So let's just try and kill his tank real quick. <laughs> it was a successful push, so despite the fact that I died a lot, uh, we were still able to do it, because the friendly team know what they're doing. So good job, guys. We do have an ult ready. We didn't use it last game, so we have to remember to use our ult. Now, again... Because of how much damage we execute people at, if we could uh, if we could ult target them all dumber and just snipe him, that would be the most ideal situation. As to whether we can actually achieve that, that all depends on whether the victor and the, the bomb king will let us, let alone the Tiberius, who seems to be doing a bit of flanking like I am. And he's yeah, he's really strong. One, go. It's just a low health man. Games like this make it apparent for his main weakness. But she makes up for that with, you know, excellent ability, attack speed, and a lot of damage. But that Bomb King also does a lot of damage. So much so that I couldn't even try to run away before he, Maldama, killed me. It's very unfortunate. I do like, the, I do like uh, changing the HUD layouts and my abilities on the bottom. I actually kind of like that. Uh, so thanks. Thanks, Toxic. Thanks for, uh, thanks for telling me about it. Really appreciate you. If you decide to watch this video too, I hope that you, I hope that you've noticed that I took your advice, and uh, I like having it laid out like this now. Wish I'd done it this whole time. It's like a whole new game. Okay, he's gonna. Yeah, he's he's managed. He made Victor is so stupid because he could literally just sprint away, and because nobody else could do that, he can escape from any situation. It's really annoying. Because I basically he did the right, so he's like, I'm just going to sprint away. It's irritating. It makes him unique, but it makes him annoying. Because uh, even with my movement speed, I still have a lot of trouble chasing him down. Okay, so Bomb King is trying to zone up. Well, that hits us from that distance. Alright, Bomb King. I don't remember you being able to hit me from that distance. Oh, okay, we'll just get sniped by the Khan there. It's the, the pro sniper tank Khan. <laughs> I'm Khan, I'm a pro sniper! I don't remember Khan being a CSGO sniper professional, but anyway. I mean, not even CSGO. Maybe more COD, maybe? Warzone? Warzone sniper? Maybe Khan plays Warzone in his spare time. You disgust me, Khan. He's actually one of my favourite tanks. I can't really I can't really say too much negative about him. Is the push is going good, though. Surprisingly, despite the fact that I've been getting nuked this whole time. I'm going to ult. I'm going to ult and probably not do anything with it. Yeah, I'm just going to die. Because they all stayed up, and I can't jump up there, and I can't I can't use my tendril while I'm in alt status. That was foolish. I desperately wanted to use it to show it off, and all I did was get myself killed for it. Ah, <sighs> but that's what it's like. You go to third person like that, and then when you get to within range of somebody, it'll target them, and then you can you do it like this one big slash to them, and it does a heck of a ton of damage. All right, well that's just GG. Um. Kind of a sad game. We didn't get to really do much. We spent way too much time just getting killed. Uh, the low health really hurts. I didn't feel it the first game because I kind of got lucky because the enemy team just didn't do anything. But uh, yeah, that was a good example of uh, how rough it can be for Vora out there with higher, you know, higher health opponents. But her damage output is pretty insane. Now, I don't really want to look at the scoreboard because we literally got zero kills. That was our, like one of our worst games. We've ever had the matchup just wasn't there for us. Like, 
yeah, I didn't want to really approach it. The Victor just kept running away. The Tiberius does really high damage. He has more health than I do. Bomb King and Khan, like, you, I'm not even confident to 1v1 them. Especially when I've, you know, this is my first game as Vora. But it gives you guys an idea what Vora's like. And I guess what to avoid as Vora. What champions are pretty much, to an extent, pretty much like a counter for her, really. Um, where is she, though? Where, where did she go? Well, there she is, level 3. So she's a really fun character. I do recommend picking her up. If you've played the game a fair bit and you like assassin flank characters, if that's like your main thing, I definitely recommend picking her up, giving her a go, trying out different loadouts and stuff for her. Her abilities are really awesome. Her self-sustain is incredible and her damage is off the charts. It's just, uh, you've got to be mindful of this health. That's all. It's, it's the biggest thing and I think she is one of the lowest health characters in the game. Don't quote me on it. I'm pretty sure that, I think, yeah, there are ones with lower health, but hers is up there on the low tier, so... Be wary of that, but if you can master her mobility and a, and a damage reduction and a healing and, you know, snipe single targets to the flank, you can be devastating. I've seen Vora, like, literally, um, clutch games. So, yeah, give the character out. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Let me know if you've played her. Let me know if you've got a loadout for her. Uh, because this video didn't go too well, if you want to see me do more Vora, let me know in the comments, because we've almost done all the characters now. So, at that point, if you want to see more Paladin's content, if you want me to do another video with Vora, with a different build or something, or just, you know, just a, a second attempt, like a redemption arc, then let me know, and I'll get some practice with her, and we'll try again. But yeah, uh, I stream on Saturday, so be sure to come and check that out. You'll be able to see it on the channel, and then schedule it, uh, schedule, like, a reminder for it. It'd be great if you come by and watch the stream, and chill out for us for four hours. And uh, otherwise, yeah, like button, subscribe button are free, and I really appreciate it if you hit those things, and yeah, it'd be awesome. Appreciate you guys watching. I'm really bad at this outro still, so uh, I'm, I'm trying to figure it out. <laughs> So till the next time guys, dodge that game over screen, I am Phantom 100 and I'm signing out for now.